What's going on my friends, I wanted to discuss traversing techniques in the context of the 8A traverse of the beautiful Sonnen deck boulder which is the perfect fit for this topic because it features many of those techniques in a very instructive way. I'll start by showing you the first attempt after the warm up which I didn't expect too much from, still with the hoodie on, before that for the warm up I simply hung some edges on the rock and tried a couple of single moves. I already had half an hour of working time on this bowler from the end of a previous session, so I knew decent beta regarding start and midsection. I was still unsure about the end though, which we will see later. The goal of this attempt was to rewire the start, but quite unexpectedly I climbed well into and actually almost surpassed the midsection. The problem can be sectioned into three parts, relatively easy start, a sketchy midsection and then the cruxy end. The start features a quite prominent horizontal crack with a number of quite okay holes. The challenge here is to know what to take and what to leave out and getting hand and foot order right while climbing as fast as possible to save energy. This was basically my first shot at the problem from the start. I still moved very intuitively, yet climbed surprisingly well I think. In terms of footwork, the left foot pretty much does all the stepping. To save time, I didn't bother stepping with right, which would be possible. There are small footholds in the overhang for right as well, but feet for left are much better and more reliable. I want to point out the flag which allowed me to grab further with right. This is a technique which often fits such around the corner situations. If you've seen my technique episodes you know that usually a flag can be exchanged with a drop knee and vice versa. Why is the flag more ideal here? Well, first of all we spare one foot switch which would be mandatory after the reaching further with the right hand was completed to be able to cross over with left again. By flagging, my left foot is already in place from the very beginning and I can keep it until my right hand arrives in that outpost in the horizontal crack, which makes me very fast, which is the goal for the start, right? And only now we have to let go of it to set the heel hook from which we can get that side pull. Now, secondly, it is not helpful for a drop knee if the non-twisted leg, in this case it would be the left leg, is in the air and has no resistance to push against. That's why I say flags are usually preferable in around the corner situations because you don't need any resistance in the flagging leg for this technique to work. So now letting go of that left heel hook, short intermediate step and right heel hook up. A really precise sketchy heel hook, one of those where you can and even have to press your toes against the roof a bit to create some additional friction. Here the midsection starts, lock off to a crimp with right, and now the problem becomes really crimpy and holes are significantly worse than at the start. Who doesn't like a crappy crimp below the fingertips? Wonderful. And again flag, this time left leg, grabbing the next crimp close by with left, repositioning left leg again to set up another lock off, grabbing the next crimp with right and here my hook pops out ending this attempt. I wasn't that pumped, so not only did I know I was properly warmed up now, I also could basically start making red point attempts. Let me recapitulate this midsection one more time to point out that it is similar in stepping strategy to the start, identifying the one most efficient foot, in this case the heel hook with right, and following through with that as long as possible to save time and therefore energy otherwise wasted on stepping around. I did three moves out of this heel hook only repositioning my left hanging leg. So while the start is dominated by the left leg regarding stepping and right leg regarding flagging, the midsection is dominated by right leg stepping and left leg flagging. After that it gets a bit more complicated with stepping as we will see. So let's take a look at the next attempt. There's a slight inaccuracy at the start here. I'm trying to grab too far with the right hand, but I immediately corrected, set the left foot and reach that outpost with the right hand again. Left heel hook to reach the side pull with left and right heel hook to set up for this three move combo. First lock off here to the first crimp, flag to reach the second crimp with left and then another lock off with the right hand to that next crimp. Here we have a foot switch gastoning into the crimp to match with left and again a foot switch to set up a drop knee. Here I'm doing a mistake by not finding the proper foothold to push that drop knee with left. It looks like I'm stepping something but I'm really just pressing against the roof here. 
Remember how I told you that drop knees do benefit from pressing with the non-twisting leg? This is a classical example. I barely made the move, but it took a lot more power out of my left hand than necessary. Foot switch again, short shake on the left, trying to get some energy back and gastoning into the intermediate from before, which is a very bad crimp, forcing me to pull out that full crimp weapon of mass finger destruction. Stepping right, stepping left, two very delicate footholds, setting up a drop knee for the hardest move in the whole problem for me, a catch into a slopey Gaston slot with right, which I barely managed to stick here. Now repositioning left foot, popping right foot just in time, had I popped it, uh, you know, hundreds of a second earlier, the attempt would be over instantly, but the climbing gods wanted a little more fun, so they let me keep up the fight, Gaston pressing myself into another micro shakeout and grabbing the next crimp with left, which is not so bad. Problem is, at this point the left hand is completely fried from all the little inaccuracies that have added up. Stepping right again and beautiful drop knee, coming just in time trying to save the attempt by allowing another micro shakeout for right. Now bad crimp for right, stepping right and left, two good feet actually, and now I blow it completely by doing the wrong beta, taking what should actually be an intermediate with left and slapping towards the right like a maniac to a sharp jog, which was so dirty that I instantly slipped off and it actually gave me a few cuts on the right hand and a proper ass to dirt slide back to the start of the problem as I deserved it for that performance. At least I knew now that what I had checked out initially for the finish would not work coming from the start, at least not if that target hold is super dirty, so I tried to find a cleaner solution for the very end and I actually did thankfully. At this point I'd like to point out that while during start and midsection flags and heel hooks dominate the scene, on the cruxy finish it's the drop knees that dominate, thereby completing the three main traversing techniques we will encounter over and over again on these kinds of problems, flags, heel hooks and drop knees. Being aware of them, knowing how to use them will make your climbing a lot more energy efficient and potentially a lot more successful here. So let's take a look at attempt number three. Again, we're entering the horizontal crack of the start, pulling the left leg behind, beautiful flag there, reaching the outpost with right, heel hook left, finding the side pull and heel hook right. This went really smoothly, actually perfectly and very fast. So nice lock off there, flag again, second lock off and third lock off to the crimp, slight inaccuracy there, I wanted to do this move safer than I should, I didn't want to pop that right heel hook again, but it worked anyway, so yeah, my luck there. This time finding the foothold for the left foot to press into that drop knee, reaching the Gaston with right, Gastoning, micro shakeout and getting the intermediate with left from before, full crimping there again, setting up the drop knee, and they're hitting the uh, slot Gaston properly. Now this time a really high left foot there to Gaston myself into that situation. Reaching the next crimp which is actually a lot better, setting up another drop knee here, shaking out quite a long time for the right hand. Right foot, left foot and this time taking the small edge with left properly as an intermediate and bumping to the top. This beautiful uh, rough sloper ball there, I don't know how I should describe it, but it's not such a bad hold. You can actually go there dynamically and be quite pumped and still will stick it. So now time for a shakeout and then doing the quite easy top out. So that's the quick analysis of traversing techniques, I found this problem features them in a very instructive way. Let me know if I could refine your technique repertoire a little bit, that would be awesome. Drop a like, that's always appreciated, stay strong and I'll see you soon in the next one my friends, bye.